Hello there, and I would like to warmly welcome you to my first free video tutorial. I intend this to be the first of many such tutorials. The subject of this tutorial is the flipbook texture in the UDK, and in order to consider the flipbook texture further and to explain what it is, I'm going to need to consider three main questions. So let's get started and see what those three questions are. Okay, so the first of the three questions to answer is what is a flipbook texture? That is, what is it about a flipbook texture that makes it what it is? How does a flipbook texture differ from other kinds of textures? Then the second question is what are flipbook textures used for? What are the kinds of things in a game that flipbook textures are used to achieve? And then the third and the final question is how to work with flipbook textures in the UDK. And this covers the kinds of things such as um, how can I create a flipbook texture? in the UDK and what are the kinds of tools that the UDK offers for working with flipbook textures for being able to integrate them into a game. Now that we have considered all three of these questions, let's set about answering them and we'll start with the first one. What is a flipbook texture? So what you are looking at here is the perspective viewport of the UDK and it contains a cube with an animated material applied. This material uh, does not ship with the UDK. It is a material that I have created for the purposes of this tutorial. You'll notice that the uh, animation features a countdown, uh, some numbers counting down from 14 to 0. This animation is created by a flipbook texture. It is the work of a flipbook texture. And in order to see the flipbook texture a little bit better, let's just switch over to Photoshop and see what it looks like. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that it has at least two properties in common with any standard texture, really. If we click on image and view image size, we can see that the texture, first of all, is square. It is equal in terms of its width and height. But also its dimensions are a power 2, which is an industry standard size for textures generally. Um, that means that the texture should be any dimension such as 32 or 64 or 128 or 256, 512, 1024 and 2048. These are all standard sizes for textures. Your texture really should not be any other size. The other uh, property that the flipbook texture has in common with standard textures is that the image is in the RGB color space. It has a red, green and a blue channel. But the essential property of a flipbook texture, that which makes it different from other textures, is that a flipbook texture defines an animation. And you will notice here that each frame of the animation is packed into rows and columns. All the frames of one complete animation is packed neatly into this grid here, which is saved as one complete texture. And the UDK ends up playing back the animation by showing only one frame at a time and playing each and every one of the frames in sequence. So what kinds of things can a flipbook texture be used to do, apart from create animated countdowns on cubes? Well, one thing for which the uh, flipbook texture is very commonly used is to create explosions or explosion effects. And to see this, let's move over here to the content browser. And in the search pane, search for the word explosion. 
and make sure that the textures filter is ticked to limit this um, preview pane here to only textures. And what you'll notice about these textures here, about in particular five textures, this texture, this texture, this texture, this texture, and this one, is that they are all flipbook textures, or that they can all be used as flipbook textures. That's because each one of them has the whole set, set of frames for an animation packed into the texture. Let's double click this one here to look at it more closely. What you'll notice about this is that this texture contains a whole set of frames for an explosion animation. So now we've answered the first two questions. What is a flipbook texture and what are the kinds of things it can be used for? Let's now address the third and perhaps the most important question of how can we use flipbook textures in the UDK? What are the steps involved in importing a flipbook texture and applying it to uh, the geometry in our level? So I've created a new level here in the UDK editor, and this is a blank standard template level. And I'm going to show you the complete process for importing a flipbook texture into the UDK and then to apply it to this cube here. The flipbook texture that I'm going to import and assign to this cube is the countdown texture that you have seen already. The first stage of importing the texture involves using the content browser. So I'm going to press Control shift f on the keyboard to display the content browser. I'm going to right click on the content browser background and display this context menu. The topmost option, import, is the one I want because I want to import the flipbook texture from a file on my hard drive. So I'm going to click that option. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the file selection dialog and select my flipbook texture here. If your texture is not visible, then be sure to check this file filter drop down and you'll want to make sure that the all files option is selected, the topmost option. So I'm going to click open here and what appears here is the standard import dialog box that you might already be familiar with when importing an asset. It's asking me to name a package here and I'm going to call this uh, flipbook textures. I'm going to leave the group name blank. I'm going to assign the flipbook texture this, this name. I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to scroll down to this option here that says flipbook. Now be sure to enable this option. It is very important. If this option is not enabled and I click the OK button, the texture will not import as a flipbook texture. It will instead import as a standard texture and there is no way to change this after the texture has been imported. So you must be sure to enable this on import. I'm going to click OK and my texture will be imported into the content browser as a flipbook texture. Now the flipbook texture as I said is more or less a standard texture but with some additional properties that are applied to it. Now those properties are currently at their defaults and they are not appropriate for the texture that I have imported. So to adjust these properties, select the texture in the content browser and then right click on the texture and select properties from the context menu. This will display the properties dialog and you will notice that the topmost component in this dialog is titled flip book. Ensure that looping is enabled. This will play my animation on a loop. Ensure autoplay is enabled. This will make sure that my animation plays immediately on being assigned to the object in the scene. 
And the important, or two of the particularly important properties are the horizontal images and the vertical images. Make sure that both of these are set to 4 in this case. These, are, these indicate how many images run across the texture, in this case 4, and how many images run down the texture, in this case 4 as well. Leave this FB method to UL row, which stands for upper left. There are others here which are upper right, lower left, lower right, and random. And these tell the Unreal Engine how to play the texture. It might the upper left row indicates that the texture should be played from left from the upper left corner, moving row by row downwards. So it begins at 14, 13, then 12, and then 11, then moves down to 10, 9, 8, and so on. Other variations uh, that are listed here will cause playback to begin and follow in other ways. So playback may, for random for example, that will cause uh, the animation to play any one of these frames at random. The final frame rate property indicates how many frames per second will be played in the animation. The default is 4, meaning that after one second of playback, 4 frames will be shown. So after one second, frames 14, 13, 12 and 11 will have been played back. Since I'm supposed to be showing a countdown, I should be showing one number per second. So that should be one frame per second. And that has now configured my flipbook texture. The next stage in the process is importing this flipbook texture into a material that can be assigned to the cube. OK. So having um, imported the flipbook texture into the UDK, the next step is to load this into a material. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the background and select new material from the context menu. And again, I'm presented with the um, usual import dialog. I'm going to name the material flipbook Mat and click OK. And here I am presented with the material editor. I'm going to assume that you are reasonably familiar with this editor. I'm not going to explain the interface in this video. The key point to note here is that to load the flipbook texture into the material editor, I should return to the content browser select the flipbook texture in the content browser, move back to the material editor, right click on the editor background and select texture and new flipbook sample. I click this and immediately the flipbook sample is loaded with my flipbook texture. I'll connect this to the emissive channel. It doesn't have to be the emissive channel, it could be the diffuse. I'm connecting it to the emissive so that the material will be unaffected by the scene lighting. I'll close the material editor, I'll save my changes, and then I'll simply drag and drop the material onto the cube, like so. I'll close the content browser, You'll notice um, in the content browser that the texture does not appear to be animated. And if I scroll around the texture here, you'll notice that no matter which angle I view the cube, the material is not animated. That is because the real-time mode of the editor is disabled. If I move up to the toolbar, the, the viewport toolbar, and I select real-time, You'll notice now that the flipbook texture is animating in the cube. 